This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Um, this is a lecture on um, accounting standard number 10. And I hope you've got the chapter in front of you. Uh, but it's events after the reporting period. And what it's getting at is this. That suppose, I'll use the dates I've written in the notes, but you don't need to read it all while I'm talking. Suppose I tell you um, that we're preparing accounts for the year ended uh, 31st December, um, let's say 2008. Well, of course, when you're preparing a set of accounts, you don't sit there at midnight, 2008, and press a button and there are the accounts finished. It actually takes, um, depends on the business, obviously, but it takes several weeks uh, or even months to actually finish the accounts. And then probably the auditors arrive and they may take several weeks or months checking them. So it's quite a while before the accounts are finally complete and that they're given to the state. So the accounts are only completely finished when we've actually signed them um, and given, as I say, to the state, to the tax people, whatever. And so suppose they're actually finalised. Oh, I say it takes a while to um, prepare, then the uh, auditors are checking them. I'm making up a date, it might be anything. Let's say we finalise them by the Ooh. 2nd of May, it says here 20th of March, I'll use that one, 20th of March. So once we get to the 20th of March, that's finished, the accounts are complete. Well, what we're talking about here is if things happen between those two dates, if, for example, in February we find there's been a mistake in November or something, of course, we're capable of changing the accounts. We're capable of changing the accounts at any time up to the date they become final. On my example, 20th of March, but it's not no special date. But whenever the accounts become final, uh, once the accounts become final, then it's too late. But we are capable of changing them up to that date. And we want to make sure the accounts are correct. And what we're looking at here is, are we, depending on what's happened, are we going to change the accounts or aren't we? Now, you'll see uh, on the first page of the notes, this mention of adjusting events, non-adjusting events. I'll explain by example. So if you want to write anything, the space on the next page, it says examples of adjusting, non-adjusting events. Let me go through a few examples of things that might happen. First of all, I think a very obvious one. Suppose on the 1st of February, 2009, we discover an a mistake made in November 2008. It's been an accounting mistake. We entered the wrong number or something. Uh, it was made in November 2008. We didn't discover it till 2009. Well, are we going to correct the mistake in the accounts? Of course we are. We want the accounts to be correct at the end of December 2008. So if there's a mistake in November, the accounts are wrong. We need to correct them. We will change the accounts. And we call it an adjusting event. So an adjusting event, and I'm going to give you other examples in a minute, but an adjusting event is one where we will change the accounts. We want the accounts to show the right figures as at the year end, December. 
I think that's sensible enough. But what about this one? On 31st December 2008, our year end, we've got a factory and it's in the accounts at a value of, let's say, 1 million. Suppose I tell you, uh, on the 18th of January 2009, uh, it's destroyed by fire. Uh, and there's insurance on it. Uh, but the insurance is only for... 500,000. Well, remember, the accounts aren't going final until March. This has happened in January, so we are capable, if we want, to change the accounts. The question is, will we change the accounts? Are we going to leave the factory at a million, even though not long after it was destroyed? Or are we going to do something else? Well, the answer is we do not change the accounts. We want the accounts to be correct at 31st December. And at 31st December, the factory did exist. No problem. We won't change the accounts. For that reason, we call it a non-adjusting event. And I think that's fair enough. I say again, we want the accounts to be correct at December. The factory existed at December. However, although we won't change the accounts, if the amount involved is material, and you would assume a million was material, it was big, but if the amount is material, I'll put but. So don't change the accounts, but if the amount involved is material, we'll write a note or we'll disclose by note. So we will let the shareholders know what's happened. The factory will sit there at a million in the accounts, but there will be a note attached and it has to be a detailed note. It will say um, on the 18th of January, the factory was destroyed by fire. Uh, the insurance money is 500,000. So there'll be a note explaining and it will show the amounts. So there we are. I mean, I'll give you one or two more examples, but that's it really. We're looking at um, things that happen between the year end and the date the accounts are finalized. And the question is, if it affects the position at the year end, we will change the accounts. It's an adjusting event. If it doesn't affect the position at the year end, we won't change them. It's non-adjusting. But if it's material, we'll write a note. So let's have one or two more. Number three. Included in inventory... At 31st December, our items, oh sorry, is an item valued at cost of 100,000. This item was sold on 5th of January 2009 for 40,000. Now, what are we going to do? I mean, we're not going to record the sale. You only record a sale when you actually make the sale. So certainly not going to record the sale. But why is that relevant? It's relevant because surely inventory should be valued always at the lower of cost and net realizable value. 
We've dealt with that in the chapter earlier on inventories. We should value it the lower of cost and net realizable value. We valued it at cost. Well, the inventory did exist at December, but we found out later that its uh, realizable value wasn't 100,000 or more. The realizable value was only 40. Well, even though we found out later, it doesn't matter when we find it, it does mean that at the 31st of December, now we've got this information, the valuation was wrong. And so we will change the accounts. It's an adjusting event. That will go back and instead of valuing that inventory to 100, we'll value it at 40. We'll reduce the inventory valuation by the difference of 60,000. So we want the accounts to be correct to December. We take into account information we find out later. If it affects the value at December, we'll change it. If it doesn't affect the uh, value at December, like the uh, factory fire, then we won't change it. Just one more, and I include it because it's quite a common one for the exam. Suppose included in receivables at 31st December is 200,000 owed by Mr. X. On 1st of February 2009, we discover Mr. X has gone bankrupt and that we will get nothing. Well, what do you think? Are we going to change the accounts or aren't we? At the moment, they're showing 200,000 as owing. Well, the answer is we will change them. All right, we found out the information later, but had I known at December that he was going to go bankrupt, what would we have done? Um, we'd either have written off the, um, the debt or at least we'd have had a provision well, we didn't find out till later, but it still affects, it doesn't matter when we find it. I say again, had we known at December, we would have valued differently. And so we will change the accounts. It's an adjusting event. I wish I could spell adjusting event. So there we are. I'm not going to go through any more examples, but learn the terminology. Make sure you're clear what we mean by adjusting, non-adjusting. And remember, a non-adjusting event, something still happened. You won't change the accounts, but if it's material, you will write this note. Or you won't in the exam, but in practice there will be a note. So be clear what we mean by adjusting, non-adjusting. Look back through those four examples. Make sure each of them makes sense. And of course, have a go at the examples in the notes.